you got the cloud inlays here and as we move down it's just the workmanship is crazy on this okay um, glenn let me let me kind of start you from the beginning they started in the late 70s okay um bernie rico had bc rick bernardo's guitar shop and he did acoustics um, they were getting into the electric guitars and they went to neil moser for electronics okay and these are neil this is that leo's electronics which we'll explain in a minute and, and it was a good, I don't want to say partnership, because Neil never worked for B.C. Rich. He's a contractor for B.C. Rich. Well, he designed the bitch. Neil was predominantly a rhythm player, and that full sound of the 10-string. Mm -hmm. And people say 12-string, 10-string. Okay, well, it's not like a 10-string Chapman. These two are in unison. Mm -hmm. These are in unison octaves mm -hmm. and these two are singular wow okay let, let me start we're looking at features and and but let me start on what year this guitar this was guitar made in in, exactly what in is this 2005 guitar? okay Hansa musical group who owned bc rich and still does although they're showing it now contracted neil to make 25 copies of the original bitch prototype which is owned by Dan Lawrence out at um, DRL Graphics. Okay. Um, Neil sold it to him because he needed money for a car, and that's another story. But Dan has the original. They made, they were going to make 25 copies. So Neil produced a prototype to that series. Okay. This, not being one of the 15 that actually only got produced because there was some issues there and a lawsuit that went on, but that's, I'm not going to get into that. But 15 were produced, actually 16. This one has the serial number P-R-O-T-O. -O. Yeah, let's get some of those photos out. These photos are really interesting. Yeah. They really yeah. tell the story of this guitar. Yeah, when Neil actually did these, he had a little CD and stuff with pictures in it. But this is actually a picture. Okay. And you can see Neil Proto, and that is a picture of that before it got painted. So you can see Neil Proto underneath the pickups. This is the prototype. And uh -huh. it also says Proto on the back of the headstock. Okay. That's the body blank in the case before it got touched. Okay. There it is after being the paint was started out at DRL. You can see. Yeah, it's got a lot of switches. Now there's Neil working on the guitar after I picked it up. I brought it out to DRL for Dan to um, do it. Okay. And here's Neil and I at his shop with it. You can see and this. this was in 2005. This was 2012. I'll, okay, tell you the, I'll tell you the story of that date difference here in a second. Okay. This is Dan Lawrence from GMP and myself. And this is my picking the guitar up out at DRL. I'm doing a body by hand with a planer. These weren't done on a CNC machine. These guitars were built by hand. Okay. There's Neil and myself after the, car, the guitar was complete. There I am holding it at Neil's shop when I first got it to bring it out to Dan Lawrence's. Okay. There's another picture, and if you look at it, you can see Neil Proto under the pickups. It's kind of hard. Uh -huh. There I am playing it at Neil's right. when I picked it up. Where was it, his shop at? He's up in Prescott Valley now. Um, there it is when, at the hotel when I came back for a long drive back from San Dimas because I had to break Neil. Uh, Dan Lawrence did the paint because he's fantastic. Mm -hmm. There it is at Dan Lawrence's shop. Getting worked on. Yeah. There I am with Dan Lawrence once again. So Dan, there's the Dan back Lawrence of the headstock. Was a really custom painter. Yeah, he did all those snake skins and stuff that were real famous for the BC Rich and A's. Now you can mm -hmm. see BC Rich PMS Croto. Mm -hmm. There's no date. The serial number is this. It's not 1 through 15. This is the Proto, mm -hmm. and that's the serial number. And you can see March, mm -hmm. Daniel Ferry, March of 12 is when Neil stamped the date on it and finished mm -hmm. it. And Neil looks so good with a bitch. He, he designed the bitch, and, and Neil's such a good friend. You got, By the way, you can visit him at neilmoserguitars.com. You want a good guitar, have Neil built it, and you'll figure out why he's a legend. He's just a fantastic builder, period. So, what happened was, in 2005, they contracted to build these 25 guitars. That kind of turned to bunk a little bit, and I won't get into that because it was a, a bit of a lawsuit. Um, mm -hmm. And 15 got built. However, 
Bones 15 got sold off, but Neil kept the body blank that was the proto, and it never got built. It sat in his shop, in this case, from 2005 to 2012. Right around seven years, it's in January just of just a blank. Yeah. Okay. Just a blank. It had the fret works were done, the finish wasn't on it, none of the hardware was on it, pickups, mm -hmm. anything. This paint wasn't done. It was a block mm -hmm. of wood with the neck done. Um, I wanted a 10 string, and I saw one of these with this logo, which is the old BC Rich logo with the R and the guitar on the side, which I really love. And I saw it, and I said, Neil, what's that? And he said, that's one of the PMS guitars, but that one's, you know, we didn't build it because it was broken, had an issue. I said, well, why don't you take it to build me a 10-string? Neil had built me a 6-string Moser 6 that I love, and a really nice telly. Um, and he said, you don't want that. I got the Proto here. My ears perked up, and I said, well, really? What's the price? Um... I kind of grabbed onto the bench when he told me, so I wouldn't fall over. <laughs> you were about ready to faint. I went home, mm. and I mentioned to Jen, man, I'd really like to have that guitar. You know what? We discussed it, <laughs> but yeah. And we discussed it, and, and because of what it is, it's the Proto mm -hmm. to the PMS series. There's two Protos in the world. Dan has one, I have the other. It's kind of a small club. And then the ones that look like this, there's 15 of them. So it's, the club doesn't get that big in the entire world. Most of these are in collections in Japan right now. Wow. Tarada owns uh, it's a fantastic player over in Japan. He bought up two of them, I think, maybe three by now. But they're sought after. They were, they were gone as fast as they could be built. When I got this off Neil, there were people on his forum crying that it had they been sold. Wanted it, yeah. And Neil actually said, well, Glenn didn't quibble about the price, which is a little white lie. I would never call Neil a liar, but I I think I did try to quibble a little bit. Um, of course, it's part of the game. I ended up going back up there, and Neil said, I, once again, I said, Neil, build me a 10 string. He said, Glenn, I got that proto, and I looked him in the face, and I said, okay, Neil, where okay. is it? Let me see it. Uh -huh. And his face dropped, and he said, uh-oh. And I said, yeah. So he goes in the back of the shop looking, because he's got cases, and cases of guitars all over the place. Uh -huh. And I find it in the front of the shop in a case. You can see it's still got the plastic on it. I haven't taken the plastic off that. I don't play it much. It's just a beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. So I find it. And I knew I found it. I got this case and it says Proto up on the top. So I knew I had the guitar and I opened the case and there it was, the body blank. And I was Check just... We could actually see that in the camera. That's pretty yeah. good. Isn't that cool? And it is dated uh -huh. 312. It's not the 1978 Proto, but it's the prototype for the PMS series. The commemorative series, if you want to call it. Anniversary series, the best word to use. And we end up... Let's go to tear that case up through the way. It's got a lot of dials and switches. Yeah. I'm sure everybody is very interested in to know what, what the heck do all these switches do. Um, this is the bitch electronics, what they go, Neil calls a full electron, full bitch electronics. Okay. And I'll go through it slowly. Of course, you've okay. got the tuners for these strings here. This, yeah, for the, the six oh. regular tuners. And then there. the tuners for the octave strings there. Okay. This is, I believe, the last Leo Kwan bridge that, that Deal had, if I remember correctly. DiMarzio, I want to, you, you should say super distortion, but it's called a dual sound because it's a four wire. Um, pretty hot. So I, you I, could I, split coil. Yeah, yeah, and we'll get that in a minute. And this is like a 36th anniversary PAF. Now we'll get into electronics because okay. I love the electronics on this. Okay, pay attention, people. Here it, here it comes. This is preamp number one. This is a master volume. Okay. Of course, pick up select the switch. Okay. Preamp number two. I love those little vintage switches with the red tips too. Everything mm -hmm. on this is just done like the original. Mm -hmm. This would be a phase switch, and this is a cap mod. When you've got the amp running, you're in both positions, you can mod the cap. This mm -hmm. is a master, this is a volume for preamp one, a volume for preamp two. This is a neck volume. This is the tone. This is a five position veritone switch that changes the capacitors to give you a bunch of different tones. Wow. This turns the veritone on or off. This splits the coils 
on the neck pickup, this splits the coils on the bridge pickup, and when you're on stage and you just want to take a break, you throw that switch and it cuts the signal to your cord. Hmm. You don't have to worry about any feedback. Then here's the thing, a lot of people go, oh, 10 string, why do you do 10 instead of 12? Because you can power cord a 10 string. There you go. Rock and roll. Mm -hmm. You can power best, cord that 10 string. Best of both worlds. Yes, and it's, um, it's just a beautiful sounding guitar, and I'm, I'm honored to even own this. Those are this like thing. the smoothest fret edges. This, this is Neil Moser, buddy. This, this is not some clown that built a guitar. Neil Moser is fantastic. I can't say enough about him. Mm -hmm. I've never touched a guitar that Neil built that wasn't the best. He builds a good guitar, and he cares about what he's doing. He's such a nice guy. I love him to death. Mm -hmm. um, this was a great experience just that Neil said, okay, I'll sell it to you. And he sold it to me. I've got it. I've got a Moser 6 that he built. It's a six string just like this, and I love it. Mm -hmm. Because it's, we did, he did that as a bolt iron, and it has an ebony board, and I have an X1 at the bridge, which is really hot. X2N rather, not an X1, X2N. This guitar is the bitch. This is, this is the holy grail. To me, there's no better guitar. I actually, when I was a kid, saw Rick Derringer playing one. And that's when I fell in love with the with the the bitch. As a matter of fact, if you go online, type Rick Derringer bitch on Google, you'll see a picture. It's an old picture of Rick Derringer sitting at Neil's bench playing the original prototype. What, what other artists have played these? Uh gosh, Joe Perry Slash. Um, I sold one to. Um, well, I don't want to use his real name, but Jack Frost played with uh, Avenged Sevenfold and Seven Witches. I sold him mm -hmm. a real nice '83 one that mm -hmm. I loved, and I probably should have kept, but. When it comes to a bitch, I like a 10-string. Mm -hmm. This thing rocks. This is the epitome of rock and roll. It's just a sexy-looking guitar. It's the bitch. Tell me more about the uh, the bridge. Leo Le Kwan wrap around bridges. Leo Kwan. You had to wrap around bridges, and I think what I think what Leo Kwan was doing is they wrap around, but you've got adjustments to set the intonation. I think that's okay. where that dawned on. But Leo Kwan was making these, all the early BC Riches had these, and then they went to the Quadmatic Bridge. And yeah, so you can adjust here, like the old like Gibson that. stuff. And then you can adjust here. There you go. Perfect intonation. Yeah. This thing, this thing is set up for the drags. The action is just amazing. The playability. you got to play one of Neil Moses' guitars to believe it. They're that What's good. What's the standard truss rod in this, or has it got yeah, one of those dual standard, truss rods? Standard truss rod in this. Uh-huh. This is built like the 1970s. Does it have a bitch. nut on the end of it like a Gibson, or is it more of a like, stick the Rich. Allen wrench in there? BC Rich Allen wrench. Stick the Allen wrench in there. This is, you know, basically this is a brand new 1978 BC Rich bitch. Period. Hmm. And I got to be honest with you, it was built by the man that built the original one, that mm -hmm. designed it and built it. So how cool is that? Mm -hmm. and, and I love it. It's, it's just... It's, I guess it's part of me. All my life, this was, was the guitar that... This was the one that I couldn't afford when I was a kid. If you could, even if you could mm -hmm. afford it, they weren't around. This was a very expensive guitar back in the 70s and coveted through the 80s. Of course, Neil left BC Rich in 84, 85. Um, so after 85, they're just not the same. To get one that Neil built with the clouds and the full electronics is great, but to get the prototype to the PMS series was amazing for me. That's what he calls the uh, inlays? Cloud inlays. It's just, a, it's a cool guitar and I thought to bring it down for a video because here's one you guys are not going to see. Yeah, you're not There's a few of them out there. Huh? There's 15 of these in the world. Actually, there are 16 of the PMSs in the world. 15 plus the prototype. Like I say, the original prototype is owned by Dan Lawrence, who owns GMP Guitars. Uh, well, he doesn't own, G works with Glenn at GMP. His DRL graphics is in the next boot, uh, cubicle over, whatever you want to call it, office suite over. But Dan did the paint and polyester. So um, that's a polyester It's a polyester clear. paint job, and, and i got to be honest with you, it took a while. I brought it out, what, in March, Dan? And I picked it up. It was done in, I think, July or August. And we drove back, we brought it out there because we didn't want this body getting shipped and anything happened to it. So I hand delivered it to Dan Lawrence, who is an incredible guy. What's the, what's the wood? Uh, that would be mahogany. Oh, 
Okay. Crazy good guitar. Is it a three-piece body? You've got... This is a neck through. Okay. So that's your neck. Is that still mahogany? Yeah. Okay. So This three. is your... Or oh, maple. They, they did some in maple. This one here. If you look at it's it... It's hard to know because it's painted. Yeah. It's or it's painted. stained. It's stained. Uh-huh. Stained and painted. Okay. Purple it's minty, eye. man. You didn't accidentally bump it into anything or anything. I don't. I baby it. I know uh, what I have. I love it. Um, it's immaculate. Uh, I played it a few times. There's no wear or anything on the frets at all. It, it's just, well, you feel those frets. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, the, it's, it's the holy grail of guitars. It rocks. And it'll be sweet sound and a chorusy sound. It's got a natural chorus to it. And it's just, hey, Rickenbacker, take that, you know? I mean, probably some, some of the trolls will get on and hate that comment that I made <laughs> to the Rickenbacker aficionados. This is not a Rickenbacker. Mm -hmm. But it will do that type of music. But it'll rock out like you wouldn't believe if you listen to some of Joe well, yeah, Perry. Yeah, Lita Ford used to play these things, didn't she? Lita Ford loves them. And hers right. is thinner and much lighter. Like, um, okay. and, and Neil, I think I just saw some pictures of it at Don Neil's bench. Neil was doing some work on it, but pretty funny when I when I talked to Lita down here, she's like, I was going to invite Neil and I forgot his phone number and she's going to hate me if she sees this, but I said, what do you mean? She's, yeah, I had it on my phone and I couldn't find it. I said, no problem. Let me go get a paper and I'll write it down. So I write Neil's number down I write his cell phone number down and she hand her the paper. She goes, oh, that's it. He spells it N-E-A-L. I was looking for N-E-I-L and I said, it's a blonde thing. And she just had a good laugh. But Lita and Neil have been friends for a long time. Mm -hmm. Neil Moses, a luthier, believe me. There's no fooling around with it. He builds a great guitar. But get in line. I hear there's a lot of people that want guitars built. <laughs> and it's a small shop. He doesn't production build guitars. They're done by hand, everything. Mm -hmm. How many guitars does he build a year? I, I, I couldn't answer that. Uh, I, I don't think it would be many. I know one thing that when he does a bone nut, he pulls out a bone that his wife buys in the store and he bakes it and then he gets to cutting the bone. And the little lady will tell you, that smell is awful when he's <laughs> sawn into bone. It's awful. But he does it by hand. This is, this is amazing. And there's nothing cheap done on the guitar. What's the, uh, what's the hardware as far as the tuners? Roll them. Grover Imperials, okay. just like on the original bitch. And even this, the newer BC Rich 10 strings and the ones that Neil built, he does it through the headstock because it's so hard. Matter of fact, he had Dan Lawrence's original one, he actually had to replace the bone. This is actually bone. Okay, and it's holding the, uh, the four yeah. strings there. Yeah. Bone nut, guaranteed. That but they're starting to do that through the. Yeah, because it's just so hard to, to not break the bone. It's a lot of tension blah, blah, blah. on that. Yeah, a lot of tension. Bone nut, of course, and, mm -hmm. and this isn't a bone nut blank. This is some cow leg that Neil started sanding and cutting on, and he makes the bone himself. Hmm. Neil doesn't order bone blanks. He doesn't order body blanks. He orders parts and puts good guitars together by hand. It's amazing. He, he has a passion for it, and he's such, such a... A meticulous bugger, and I, I know you hate mm -hmm. if I say it. He makes, he makes your guitar right. This guitar is fantastic, and it rocks. It sounds incredible. Put that through a full stack Marshall with the gain turned up and see mm -hmm. what happens. Of course, Slash started playing on, on this last Guns N' Roses tour. He was playing a Green Bitch again, which is good. Kind of a cool guitar, isn't it? Okay, well, hey, you going to let me play it a little bit? Yeah, as long as you promise to take a big bad cowboy. I will. I'll take my rodeo belt, off. belt buckle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Here's a master volume. Okay, and the other volume we got is neck volume. So that you can blend in that neck when you're in the middle position. Now here's where it gets really, really fun. Here's a booster. Out of phase. 
Now if we go here, nothing happens. But if we're in the middle position, tap on. And you've got another booster here. Turn both boosters on. You definitely don't need your tube screamer with this thing. Turn both boosters on. Okay. And run a, a master volume on a, a Marshall. Take the boosters off, and here's your tone. Now, if we're in the bridge pickup, split the coil, single coil. If we go to the neck pickup. So here's what I've noticed. It's got tons of tone variations, yeah. and they are obvious. You can obvious. hear a big difference in we'll, every we'll, one. We've got the neck split right now, and we'll turn on the baritone. Wow. Now we'll go tons of variations single coil now. Same pickup. Messing with the Jaguar yesterday and listening to tone variations, mm -hmm. and they're they're very minor. I mean, they're they're you can almost not even hear the different variations in there. But this is amazing the different tone variations. I can't get over that. It's it's killer. And it's then the other everything. switch that we didn't show you. You go down stage and you're gonna take a break. Let's turn it off. Turn it off to unplug. Game channel? It does. Let's crank some gain to it. You'll All right, hold on.
Okay, what pickup are you in right now? I am. What do you got both on? Pickup. Both Let's, pickups running just the guitar. Both pickups are on. Amps are off. We're, all, we're just running both pickups. Okay. There's the bridge pickup. I want to boost it. Neil, that's an amazing guitar. Yeah, buddy. Glenn, that's an amazing guitar. <laughs> Thank you, buddy.